I think it was four. Wait, no, five. I liked the one, the second, the second one. The That's second the, one ever produced. The yeah. second one's the fifth one, right? No. The what? first movie, the first episode that was filmed was episode four. And uh, episode five is The Empire Strikes Back. Clement okay. knows. All right. Hello, All right. we are live on YouTube and we are live here on Zoom. We've been live on Zoom. <laughs> We're here to talk about chain reactions and tinkering. Oh, we have Carlo too. Carlo is one of our ambassadors from, uh, oh no, Italy too, right? Carlo and Maria did the class together, Tom. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Am I getting my people right? Uh, it's nice to see you guys. Uh, oh, she also like, I think A New Hope is the, wait, is the New Hope's the first one? <laughs> now I'm going to be stuck on this Star Wars thing <laughs> for like the whole episode. Uh, so it's nice to see you. Uh, oh, it says that Carlo has been a partner in the Coder Dojo. He's been using the, the strawberries. So strawberries are really fun. I have, I already had them and I already liked them before I met Lindsay. Um, but Lindsay, when did we meet? Like, um, it was TCEA is when we actually met in person. Was that like three years ago now? <clears throat> About three years, two years ago. I think it was in 2018. Yeah. And it was just a natural collision of great projects, great ideas together. Yeah, we just, we had a lot of fun. We really like, uh, personalities are alike and we like each other. And um, I have, we've been trying to do something together for a while. Oh, look, my kid put a thumbtack here. That's nice and dangerous. But it might work in the chain reaction. Who knows? Um, but we've been talking, Tom and Lindsay and I, about doing strawberries and making makey mashups. And this whole staying at home thing, kind of, we got a little crazy on our around the world chain reactions. So, Lindsay, do you want to talk a little bit about what the Tinkering Studio did with the chain reactions? Like how they kind of put that out there and we jumped on it or what happened to you? Because I know, I know you took up your whole, whole apartment, I think. <laughs> Yeah, so, so just last month, the Tinkering Studio also, um, that is based in the Exploratorium started this online craze on Twitter using the hashtag round the world underscore chain reaction. And that is a hashtag I recommend everyone to view, you know, during the webinar, after the webinar, um, to talk about how we can incorporate chain reactions using materials in our household. Of course, we are using Makey Makey and Strawbees, but of course we wanna you know, extend beyond what we have. So utilize the materials that we have. So the chain reaction is basically, it could be anywhere from making a very long, you know, long journey for a ball to travel through, or it could just be things knocking over. So it's not specifically, um, there's no really right, right way to make a chain reaction. And um, in this last month, Colleen and I have been creating a few chain reactions since then. Uh, also using the Strawbies uh, classic, which is the roller coaster run. So we have a roller coaster run that we use to create the tracks themselves, and also creating these um, these three uh, these um, oof, geometric shapes. In case you don't have boxes or it's not really easy to just build on top of furniture, that you can kind of build these projects. So you can kind of build a space, you know, using the materials. Uh, using the straws to create, you know, a th uh, taking over shape. So I can connect these together, for example, using strawbies. And for those of you that know, don't know what strawbies are, we make these colorful cl connectors. So we have connectors like this one leg, and we have one with three legs here, and even some that are with five legs. But of course, you're not stuck with just building with just these particular connectors. You can actually combine them together and make your own. So for example, if you wanted a connector that had six legs, you can combine two of these together and make a six-legged piece. And we also have a lot of uh, pieces that you can create. You can create your own construction set. So what that means is that we have these straws that you can fit on to the legs of the strawbies like this. But you can also combine the straws using the connectors. So if I wanted to make an even longer straw than this one, I can take this straw and put a strawby connector inside of it. 
and then combine them together like this. And I can extend it. So it can, I can even give it even more length using the construction pieces that I have. So Ooh, can, you know, can I interrupt you for like a second? Of course. Only because um, I built this, this, uh, well, I was going to show you something valued, but I built this, the roller coaster yesterday and I was, I had not done that before. What well, you just did mm -hmm. with the extender legs and what's super cool about it that makes it different than like when you're, if anyone <clears throat> hasn't done a chain reaction, it is like a Rube Goldberg machine. It is basically what can I get to roll from this way to that using whatever's in my house. So using strawberries is kind of fun and a little bit of a cheat, I suppose, because it's more straws than normal. But uh, the cool thing is that part of the tinkering process in a chain reaction is like getting the ball to roll the way you want, getting the ball to roll fast enough, slow enough, et cetera. And so the fact that I could actually adjust the height of the straws, I didn't know I could do that. Like I didn't realize that I was adjusting it just by that one I, that one structure already built. So I think that's like super, super cool. So I'm oh, sorry, I had to interrupt you with that. That's all right. I mean, actually to, to spin off of that, there's a question in the chat about, is a chain reaction Rube Goldberg? So mm -hmm. a chain reaction is kind of a whimsical contraption and it would, and you have inventors like Rube Goldberg. So Rube Goldberg is actually the name of an inventor behind mm -hmm. a certain type of uh, chain reaction. And basically, the idea um, is that they really are the same. So you're trying to devise an overly complicated way of accomplishing a simple task. So anywhere from rolling a ball or maybe knocking like a domino effect, like literally domino effect with dominoes, to trigger an event or you can actually trigger multiple events. So for example, you can trigger events where you could make something, make, you can make the makey makey trigger sound using scratch, but that could be at the end or it could be during the process. So you can have multiple events and it could also be a spectacular failure. So as we can all understand, not, not always does a chain reaction work properly. And in a way, part of the tinkering process is that what you start with most likely will not be the end result. You probably will modify and change it at some point. Yeah, and uh, Michael is telling us, Michael, you can actually change the way you're chatting and everyone will see that, but he's, yes, Rube Goldberg is a cartoonist and an engineer. I actually shared in the, the chat, the post I wrote up a, a little bit about Rube Goldberg. I think it's funny because it's like one of those names that's become a verb and we, <clears throat> we we almost don't really understand what he did before. So I did a little bit of research and saw all of the cartoons of his weird um, contraption ideas. And to me, Rube Goldberg was just like the inspiration for Inspector Gadget and Wallace and Gromit and all the, this like, whole type of uh, personality <clears throat> that, oh, I'm sorry. I, I thought I had changed the chat and I hadn't. So I apologize, Amanda, I fixed that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, and so yes, the chain reactions are super, super cool and super fun. And, and Rube Goldberg has inspired a lot of us. But did he ever actually make things, or did he only actually do the cartoons of them? Because this is something I don't, I don't know. I didn't. I looked and I did, a, I did a little research, and I did see that uh, his heir is uh, now hosting Rube Goldberg challenges. Mindy says he just made the cartoons. He didn't actually make the things. So that's what I kind of thought. That's what I was like, it's kind of weird that we've all, we're all kind of stuck on these uh, concepts, but that when I was a kid, mousetrap was a big game. And I think that was, uh, that was like, that is also inspired by Rube Goldberg. So that's pretty cool. Um, to get back to chain reactions and strawbies, although I don't think that's, that's too different, but the tinkering and the playing is the important part. And I think that's what makes chain reactions sort of a fun um, entryway into hands-on learning if someone hasn't like spent an hour playing to figure something out before this is a great way to start um, like I had my kids sitting here yesterday and I kept sending Lindsay pictures and I was like they won't really help me like they helped a little bit with this and then they were like we're gonna make our own thing uh, and Valley someone called her so I don't have my phone I don't know where I put it but she made a phone stand yesterday so I'm gonna just use this to show you, she's just sitting there. She's like, I made a phone stand. So now she could FaceTime with her grandma uh, using this phone stand, like it holds the phone in place. It was pretty fun. And then um, 
she made a snowman. I haven't sent you that picture. I'll send you that. It's a, complete with gloves and a carrot nose and a hat and it's really pretty funny. So I think, you know, the idea is to get kids and um, and adults playing to have fun because because it's fun and it took me a very long time to set up mine. So uh, if you want to talk about yours uh, and then I can share a little bit about what I did and then maybe our surprise guests will show up. It looks like some of them are here. But. Yes, yes. Yeah. So the chain reaction that I created here is just behind me. It's a little big, so I might have to just rotate my, my uh, computer as it works. But the idea that I was going for was just basically making a ball travel using a little generating a little bit of potential energy build the buildup of potential energy so building the the track so the ball doesn't fly off was a big um, aspect that i was going for but also trying to trigger a you know a sound to go with them uh, to sound to play when i play with the makey makey so actually the ball that i have here i'm using this small plastic ball kind of like a ping pong ball that's rolling down the track but it's actually trying to knock then one of these aluminum balls that I created. So, you know, you can just wrap a bunch of, you know, in your hands or against the, against the floor or table to make a round sphere. Sometimes I put a marble or coins inside to give it a little extra weight because what I found that even though this ball will roll, it may not be heavy enough to, you know, trigger, you know, when it, when it touches the ground and a button. Um, so I try to actually make it a little heavy. So this is actually a little heavier than it looks where you can even just wrap aluminum foil around a marble. But the marble is a little too small for my track because my track, and I'll show you here, my track is a little too wide. Of course, I can adjust it using the strawbies like this, you know, making it a little bit thinner. And I could roll the marble on like this. But of course, I wanted to use a much heavier ball. So that's why I actually have like a few coins in the middle inside this aluminum ball. So I'm going to try to trigger my chain reaction using the roller coaster track. So it has like a small kind of like pachinko machine and it has these aluminum foils. And I'll show you with my actual, actual piece here. So I have these kind of aluminum foil like switches. So inside the straw I'm using and the aluminum foil I have connected with actually a, a small thin wire like this that is actually going through and actually this part was the hardest part of the chain reaction, making the track, even though it, you know, that took a lot of time, especially just balancing it so it didn't go too far. So the ball wouldn't just fly off. It was actually making this part here to trigger and make the sound effects. That was the absolute hardest part because when I want to you know, connect the wire here, you know, mm -hmm. I want it to be just touching, but I, don't, but I also want this to have you know, no friction. Yeah. So that part was actually quite the hardest. So and we did uh, that. We did that together last week. We kind of played together, mm -hmm. worked through that. That was fun. Yeah, I was using one of your, your previous instructables with the distance, oh, yeah. with the distance. Uh, Rate and oh, time. Yeah. yeah, that actually was an, was an Aaron build. That's his idea. Mm -hmm. And it's a great idea. Because mm -hmm. it was a way that I could actually utilize the ball. Because actually, it's never going to make the same sound every right. time it's going to actually have a different output every time the ball lands. So it might make a different sound. I could assign something where I can do an animation scratch. So then I can get more points for a certain, certain trigger, or mm -hmm. I can, you know, make an animation. You know, so I can actually make a bit of a gamification. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, the past couple of weeks, I made something even bigger that took over my whole apart, uh, my whole living room. <laughs> yeah. I mean, these chain reactions can be, you know, very uh, invasive and infectious of a whole living yeah. space. Yeah, uh, I am distracted by Andrea's comment about Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, because I think mm -hmm. like 
I think when I was a kid was like the epic movement of chain reaction type weird inventor ideas in childhood movies and shows and because it because I just keep thinking about weird things there was there was that and Chitty Chitty Bang Bang is actually one of my favorite movies ever and they have this whole crazy thing about eating breakfast where it cracks the egg and opens it and it's all very much like a like a Rube Goldberg cartoon and um and and there was another cartoon where uh, it's Max Fleischman, I think. And I think I put this in the blog post about it. But Max Fleischman builds um, toys for orphans. In the cartoon, it's a, like a, a, a man who builds all these toys for orphans on Christmas out of just the stuff around their house or around the building. And it's like one of the best cartoons that I just stuck in my memory of like, oh, I can just take everything that's around me and play with it and find a new way to use it. So it's pretty fun. Were you gonna show us yours? Were you gonna make it go? Or were you just talk, gonna talk about it? I didn't know. Oh, I'll show it again. I mean, I know it's a little hard. So I think actually this time- It's I'm probably gonna... too hard. It's probably too hard to show, but if you wanted to try. Yeah, I think I'm gonna actually take the computer on a journey with the ball. Nice. Oh. I'm yours try, is very large. What's yeah. that? You're Yours is very large, it, like takes up your whole kitchen. Exactly. I actually wanted to get even bigger, but for the sake yeah. of the webinar, this is the smallest I decided to make it. And even that was a little too much, but of course, yeah. it's kind of part of the fun that you can actually really expand. So let me just uh, set this up and I'll even turn on the sound again. And I think half of chain reactions is the setup, like the setup every time. Uh, my children have already played with mine this morning, so it's probably not going to work when I go to show you guys. <laughs> so, of course, at Strawberries, we really like to build big. So this yeah. is kind of a natural thing we just always like to do. And of course, we have to remember sometimes small is good. <laughs> Okay, so now I'm gonna start it over this time. So as you can see here, we have this track. So I'm gonna be releasing the ball right here and it's gonna fall and hopefully trigger nice. our switches at the bottom. I see, you have different switches for each one, cool. So I'll know which one is probably the most common. So let's try it. Ooh, going. Oh, just barely worked. <laughs> just barely. Yeah, I touched. hear it. I heard it clapping. It did the scratch button. <laughs> yes, yeah, so That's fun. again. Colleen, you might want to feature Lindsay's um, video. Oh, am I not? Well, when you talk uh, on my screen, it oh, focuses yeah. on you. Okay. okay, but I think she's done now. <laughs> I'll try it again. Yeah, sorry. Please. Yeah, do it one more time. I'll have your video spotlighted. I'm sorry, everybody. It's I mean, early. Honestly, you, you oh, can't so, just do a chain reaction one time. Yeah, Jackie, there you can already go to Strawby's site and make this roller coaster. Um, she already has this posted, so um, it's all. Let me find that PDF. That's where I think I found it. The PDF you guys shared. Okay. I'll look for it. You do the thing. All right. So let's try it again. Oh, nice. <laughs> barely, barely touching, like very slightly. Oh, I heard it. It's like still going. It's stuck. <laughs> now worked too well. Yeah, that happens. Um, so on, on mine, because our special guests are joining us any second, I'm gonna, I guess, oh, he's already there. there he is. Eric, well, you can see what I did. Let me show you what I did because I think it's fun. I almost accidentally muted myself just now. All right, so first I wanted to share a couple of weird things like 
So you can take the ping pong ball and you can cover it with foil. Um, you can use a coat hanger. This was the only coat hanger I could find, but Lindsay and I talked about this coat hanger and how it might actually make a really cool switch because maybe the ball could hit this and spin and touch something because binder clips are conductive and coat hangers are conductive. And if you don't have fancy copper tape, you can take a piece of foil and glue stick and make your own copper tape. Uh, I've been trying to tell everyone that because they keep forgetting. And also, if you do have copper tape, I learned this from Josh Berger. Uh, put it in a Ziploc bag and just feed the tail out. And then you won't get the nasty mess of, um, of copper tape everywhere, which I think Tom had that experience pretty recently. I was like, what am I gonna do? So yesterday I went on a Strawby's building adventure and I built a roller coaster, but I really wanted to build the grabber. And then, oh, this is gonna be hard to do. I wanted to build the grabber and I gotta keep the iPad on because the iPad has my scratch game. All right, so I wanted to build a grabber, but I wanted it to, when it grabs, I wanted the ball to be the thing that sets it off. So one side is earth and one side is uh, space. And I'll have to um, unplug it to bring it closer for you to see. But also my husband, Aaron thought, instead of a ping pong ball, use an oh. Easter egg, which I thought was genius and fun because also an Easter egg doesn't roll the same and it's just kind of hilarious. So I kind of gamified the chain reaction because to play, and then my kid, this is why my kids won't stop doing it. So I set up a timer. I've apparently already hit start. So let me start my timer again. Uh, I set up a timer so that when you pick up the ball, that presses a key on scratch and the timer starts mm -hmm. and the ball, there's a fake, there's a virtual ball in scratch. And I'll bring that up closer as it rolls down. But if I pick it up and I can't get it up here, the timer still goes. Even if I press up like 10 times, it doesn't start over. I've got it so that it just does that. So I have to pick up the ball and there's no sound effects, but I can see that it's rolling on my scratch and then I have to set it down and it has to land. Ah. It actually landed perfectly. Okay, I think I'm gonna have to move the uh, computer so you guys see if I could do that again because that I, was kind of Holly, you know, it's like It's like before I was doing this, before I came online, my chain reaction worked perfectly. And then yeah, that was- Recording, it did not work or just barely worked and it, then yeah. it started to trigger a little too much it's just those little crazy. slight slight things that you do i could have okay. breathed on it wrong just that's now the, there's, see the egg the, right <laughs> so i grabbed the egg now i'm not going to do it i grabbed the egg and i don't know if you can see but my timer's already started over here now i'm having the failures i'm supposed to have there we go <laughs> i'm having a hard time getting the egg okay i got it and i place it <laughs> No, it doesn't roll. That's what you're supposed to do. And there it goes. It actually stopped. So let me try to bring that closer to my little makey makey egg nest. So now that I'll, I can move it. But you can see it kind of rolls off and on. It doesn't, isn't perfect uh, because it's not supposed to be perfect. But I want to show you this because my daughter built it. So let me see. How can I unplug it? We'll just do that. She made a little egg drop uh, mm -hmm. out of strawberries. And actually, it's really cute. I had to put more foil because I was having the problem you had. But let me show you how she actually built it because I think it's pretty adorable. She just used uh, the connector guy to make a little landing pad for the egg. So I originally had just the copper tape, but it wasn't enough space. So you and I talked about this um, during one of our play sessions where the surface area that a Makey Makey has to have to cover is mm -hmm. a little bit complex with the ball. So that's kind of why it gets hard. So it's better to have your makey makey connections as like the landing point, mm -hmm. right? Because otherwise uh, it's probably not gonna roll across and, and go off. And that's one reason I have this. Um, so let me show you my scratch game. And someone asked, how did I get makey makey to work on the iPad? This is a new magical thing. Uh, the camera adapter, when you plug it in, mm -hmm. it just works now. So. On my scratch game, um, which I'll share the link in the timer. Oh, I apparently went 107 seconds and I started the timer over again. My scratch game still needs a little work. Let me see if I can, can I'm gonna, I want you to see what it does, which is probably silly of me, but, oh, I unplugged the makey makey. So I can't really do it right now. 
Okay, it's too many things, but I'll 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 share the link and you guys can play it virtually that way. But anyway, um, in my scratch game, I just made a timer and I have the timer be set off by pressing um, one arrow key. I think I actually can't remember now if it's space or arrow, but it doesn't matter. Let's say if space starts the timer and then when it lands, it stops the timer because it's a different key press. So I will um, this in a, an instructable later. <laughs> I, I didn't, I just made it yesterday. So it's a little bit crazy. And I did actually want to show you this, Lindsay, because building the, um, the wire on the grabber was interesting because I base, at first I was going to try to insulate it, but instead I have just foil caps here and my copper tape goes across any part where it goes straight on a strawbies. But I couldn't do that here on the corners. So the tape has the backing on it and it just, is loose. Like if you tried to have a Band-Aid, you know how you have a Band-Aid and it can move because that one part that mm -hmm. isn't sticky. So uh, that's all I did. Right what, there. I really, what I really love, um, you know, on the on the talk of like using copper tape and, you know, foil, another material I really love to use is this, this fabric, conductive, conductive fabric tape. Mm -hmm. Actually, this is tape that I used to use before I, uh, you know, I mean, I've always been a maker, but before I started actively building with it, I actually used to be a fencer and oh. fencing is a massive circuit. Although now it is partially, you know, Wi-Fi based when you connect and score in the, in the Olympics. But, you know, we have these like metal vests that are called lames in saber fencing. And you actually use this conductive fabric tape to actually yes. cover holes because you kind of puncture holes. Really? And yeah, and uh, this material is really excellent because when you fold it or bend it around, it doesn't like, yeah. you know how copper tape can tear when you bend too much, whereas this conductive fabric tape, you know, can handle a lot of bending and it doesn't tear very easily. Not to be a total product placement. Um, I mean, I know the whole webinar is a product placement, but the booster kit is one thing that we don't really see people buy them very much, but they have inside of them. Da, 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 da that amazing conductive fabric tape. So uh, it's pretty cool. And they have a piece of conductive fabric. Uh, oh, yeah. and, and these huge uh, alligator clips. They're like, I don't know how long they are. Tom, do you know, are they, I wanna say like 18 inches versus 10. But uh, Kristen, Kristen's asking how much that fabric tape is. I think it's around the same as copper tape. I think it's about $10 a roll. It's pretty really? expensive. It's the same. I, I think it's the same. Oh. Um, I buy I buy the one inch kind all the time because, like you said, you can't cut your hands with yeah. it. I think it's safer for students, safer for kids, um, and it and it and it's just dreamy because it doesn't tear. So like, yeah, it's the best. But you do have to use scissors. Yeah, all that's right. the thing. Yeah. All right. So I think uh, one of the inventors, one of our special guests, is getting pretty antsy, He's excited. excited. I, know. I can so see him back there. Can I and, introduce him? And them? Jay is, yeah, please introduce him. Jay is coming. He's almost here. Okay. Y'all, so, Scratch so. is down, so I can't share my Scratch game. That's super mm -hmm. weird, by the way. Oh, <laughs> that's okay. I'm sure it'll go back up. So yeah. I'd like to introduce to everybody our first special guest. Actually, we're all special guests here, but uh, so coming from, I'm based in Stockholm, and uh, our inventor of Strawbies is coming from Gothenburg, Sweden. His name is Eric Tolshensen, and we're going to release to the world his fantastic chain reaction. Yes. Hi, Hi. everyone. Do you hear me? We hear you. Cool. I love that's, that that's... pink sweatshirt. Yep, matching the good vibes there. Yeah. Love the product. Good. We're colorful. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's fantastic to be here. Uh, that's the thing. It's been glorious already just listening in. So I've been like when you were talking about things going wrong that's the most important part of the chain reaction because that's when you start this the thing that you build through the chain reactions is this endurance because you've done it before and you can see the kids going over and over looping and fixing it and that's one of my favorite things yeah. uh, also for myself and also for all my colleagues so I've, I, it's a classic uh, thing we do i might have gone a bit overboard with my chain reaction and i haven't <laughs> I haven't tested it a single time. So uh, unfortunately, one of the my features, I really wanted one particular thing to happen, but I didn't have time to put him up. But I can introduce 
this character to you anyway and describe him. So I don't know uh, if I should just uh, run with. Uh... Yeah, just go for it. Go yeah. for it. So this will be. I'll see. Do you, this is the first time I'm using this. Can I shift the camera or no? Nah, I'll. Luckily, I can just snap this off and then we'll see. Yeah, sometimes we um, we so have our will... phone with our phone, but that's. Oh, you're good. Uh, I have a strange laptop. See if I can. Do you still see me? Yeah, we still see you. Yeah. Oh, I don't you see, see you. Right? I just... My forehead. Oh, that's but the best part of my. <laughs> uh, okay, so. We have to fire up. I have a couple of a, a sequence of things that's supposed to happen here. So I'm just going to check that uh, this is starting. Uh, so I was supposed to, I thought I was going to have a, a one person help me out at least. So my first, uh, the first part of this is actually this thing. You see a th oh, cool. weird thing here. Mm -hmm. That's an airplane target. So I was going to crash into that to start my chain reaction. <laughs> Uh, and it works, but uh, now I'll just do it manually. Because uh, it's going to be really hard. Okay, are you ready? Let's see if this works. Is everybody up for some <laughs> yeah. your fixing? Okay. Yeah. Go for it. And you can see it? Yeah. We can. I hope this works. This has never been tested. <laughs> so this is my first chain reaction. It's basically cheating, so it's going to hopefully... Oh, look at that. It did work. Oh. You made your crane go. See. Oh, we have the first. It missed here. This is classic. <laughs> it missed. I love it. This is how it works. I'm going to see if I can trigger this. Well, we have a, an interesting failure here <laughs> where I apparently can't close the circuit. Oh. <laughs> oh, and uh, Eric's using the quirk box. So yeah, in this, case, but I, I, this is, uh, yeah, <laughs> let's see if we, classic, oh, Here goes. there we are. So Eric, really, I love this, that. That looks really good. So Eric is using these. I have to uh, make, make it. He's using oh. magnets. Woo! He's using these oh. magnet feet against the whiteboard. Oh. That's, oh, those are he cool. was able to make a very simple track with a set of straws <laughs> and then connecting it to the, the magnetic feet, which is part of our creature creator kit. Oh, those the are from your creature preach, kit. Preach. So my phone had turned off because I was actually using the Makey Makey connected Makey Makey. to my phone. I heard it. <laughs> but apparently, if you go into screen lock, <laughs> that doesn't work. So we went into we screen lock. Ah. <laughs> I love that. Uh, let's let's uh, repeat. This is a classic mousetrap thing. So we drop okay. it in. If we can uh -huh. Oh, and then it, is oh. it a catapult? Oh, look at the roller coaster. And oh, this is the last part. There you down. Computer down. Camera down. There it goes. There go. Oh, I love it. It's so slow. It's like it builds so much tension when um, it's so slow like that. This is where we're supposed to close the final circuit and I give my, because I love one thing in chain reactions is conservation of energy. So I save. Energy in uh, something that's hot that? that has some weight. Yeah. And mm -hmm. then, so that was supposed to close the circuit and do a, something that I use a lot to release a parachute thing. But in this case, something that was heavy. And then this guy was supposed to help, uh, jump up. Oh my gosh. Mr. Tiny There's a head. guy. It's a whole person. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Mr. Tiny Head was supposed to use the energy and jump up and be super happy and also say hi to everyone. But uh, <laughs> But that's it. I was playing around a lot. Uh, I'll be back. Aaron, I'm going to get the snowman. I'm going to show him the snowman. What was the servo motor supposed to do on the roller coaster? Actually, I can show you the things I used here. The servo motor on the roller coaster, it released the ball. So this tower, I can go through the chain if you want to again. Yeah, do it. it, was it. Slow. To so it started here where I used a, a tilt sensor that sends over Wi-Fi to the tower. So when that fell, the tower rose. Chris, Eric, really quickly, can you move your computer slowly so that people can kind of follow along? Because you're, you're shifting it, and it's hard to follow. Although, we all love it. We just want to really see. 
zoom yeah. in on the details. No, so there's a lot of motors and movement here, but that's because I, I used the stuff I had uh, laying around. And then it, this tower tipped over another tower, a helix. Mm -hmm. And this was where the first failure happened, where it missed this very rudimentary switch that works exactly <laughs> like the Makey Makey. I love these very shitty switches because they also work and sometimes it's just get it done and, uh, and see what happens. And then that fired up this one that released the first uh, ball. This is from, uh, what do you say? Do we swim around in the kids' playgrounds with? Oh. Got, got some of these. Oh, the, bo the ball thing. thing. And here comes, and used my classic to, to use. This is actually my first old <laughs> makey makey. So I brought <laughs> it here. First, uh, I think it's a spark fun version. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, that was supposed to scream out, uh, we love Makey Makey, and then jump down and trigger this little seesaw that you saw maybe here. Oh, look at that. Uh, the seesaw is, is uh, great. And that's because uh, using the, the fulcrum in the right way, this is a bit of engineering to tip over another tower that then closed another one of these famous shitty switches. Where I use some duct tape as a hinge, mm -hmm. make it repeatable there. And uh, one thing that you know when you make switches is scrunch up a little bit of the aluminum foil, so it really hits and closes the circuit. So you see, I, I wanted it to be low, not too advanced. Then it closes the circuit and blinks the light. This was also supposed to be like the blinks. This is one of my favorite reuses. I I wonder. If, Probably everyone here collects all these deodorant balls. So this is from deodorant. Okay, huh. okay. Roll on. Really get oh, good. Oh, <laughs> yeah, the, the thing. I get it. Yeah, really good coasters for small robots and stuff, and also great, great light dispersion. And uh, then we came to the classic mod run. And uh, that one worked, which was a wonder, because I just dropped it down. That was... yes, so that's it. The marble run is actually an iteration of the roller coaster run. There was a link that I shared in the chat. Yeah. So you yeah. can learn how to build that with the, with the link sent. But fortunately, we will also be posting the resources after yeah. the webinar yeah. as well. Got to stop and, uh, that camera. I was also supposed to uh, trigger a little thing with this can because it's also really fun. Oh, so that was one thing that happened that we might not have caught. <laughs> OK, oh, so that was <laughs> my little chain reaction. Was testing some stuff. That's good. And I really agree with your thing about the switches because I had the same problem trying to do this one that it came to the point where I was trying to get it so that the egg bridged the circuit, but it might have actually been a lot easier if I'd let it just land on it. Right. And I think one thing we didn't share uh, that we need to tell everyone is that this clip, how can I do this? I don't know who made this clip at Strawbies, but someone made this amazing I, I, clip. Was it I, made the, I made it to be able to put it in. Uh, uh, so I made the, I was also supposed to make a huge gong. It's just a good way of snapping it into the structures and making them sound. Yeah. So it's really cool. Parts. I can hook my Makey Makey on or a micro bit and I can clip it right to the straw. So it, uh, that's why it was able to be on there. And I was going to use two Makey Makeys, but I decided to just use the one. And um, so that's really fun. Jay is our other special guest here today. He's well, also yeah. wearing pink. Oh, it's planned. Uh, Eric and I coordinate every day, but through telepathy. Yeah. So yeah. the one, the funny, one of the inspirations for Makey Makey was actually like people taking apart keyboards and then inside the keyboard are two little, eventually two metal things that when they touch together, send a key press. And then people would attach those to bigger buttons or bigger apparatuses so that they would close. This is like an early hacking workshop run by a special group before Makey Makey was invented. And that's one of a few things that were going towards it. And um, and this actually follows on Draudio too. So notice that that was like two things touching, not a person touching a thing, but two things touching. And Draudio was like that at first too. It just had a little uh, alligator clip coming out of the back of the pencil, clipped onto the paper, and then you would draw from there. And only after Draudio was created and only after Makey Makey was created, did people realize that one of the best ways to connect Radio or Makey Makey was to not have a thing touching the pencil lead or a thing touching a thing, but to have the hand and the thing together. And that 
um, but kind of by accident, although we knew it was possible, we didn't know that would be the dominant mode. We thought it would be like kind of subdominant mode. And the like what you're seeing in your switches that you're creating is kind of the problem of two things touching kind of works, but when you have literally under your hands control the exact touchingness uh, of one thing to an object, then you're like, oh, it's not working, I'll press harder or I'll deform my fingers or whatever because the hand's freaking amazing. So now you're, you have this problem of two objects touching. It kind of works and everything, but you're not like uh, mentally manipulating the shape of one of those objects like you are with your hand. So it's hard, it's, you know, it has challenges. Yeah, <laughs> but it's a, it's a fun and simple challenge. I think you've done it a couple of switch, switch workshops through the ages and there's a lot of great switches that are much more fail proof than these ones. But it's fun to show this is that where you start and then you improve it because you get a little bit annoyed. That's also one of the sources of, uh, of innovation that you get a little bit annoyed that this doesn't work. But then you also figure out that like, like you did with your hand that this is a much better, this device is amazing. No, but the Wait. switches is really interesting. And, and Colleen and Will, who should be on this call probably, Will McFarlane and myself um, have been working on complex switches. So like sequences of things happening in order or um, as the water level rises or as the sponges dry out, but there's several sponges and they dry out at different rates because they're skinnier than the other ones are. And so you have a kind of uh, analog sensor that can take place either over long periods of time or quickly. And this is something that we could use to make kind of like surprising or long-term like time-lapse uh, reaction machines or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I made exactly that. And everybody in my office said, don't do that ever alive <laughs> but it's one of my favorites so it's basically using just a piece of cardboard uh, and then one of the things one one thing that the rube or the chain reaction makes us tips over a bit of water into that and the capillary force is just slowly slowly wet <laughs> the cardboard it's like the a really really slow uh, fuse yeah and that happens that's amazing and i love it but it's really that... not good for a session like this because then you would have to sit here for 20 minutes it only works for time lapse. Yeah, but, yeah exactly. But, the, but it's lovely. The, the thing you said about getting frustrated, I think that's the important part that like that teachers don't hold on to a lot of times because we don't want our kids to be frustrated. But it's actually the good thing because and I can talk very seriously while I'm wearing my strawby hat. <laughs> uh, it's it's very important to get frustrated because I feel like that's the moment right before you figure it out. Right? Like the it's most true. frustrated yeah. you get. Right kids after give up that, and kids like, have breakthroughs. And then, the, and then it's euphoric. You're like, oh, yeah. I did it. It's, it's so true. exciting. Yeah. 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 But, uh, but it is true that kids give up and that kids have breakthroughs. And that's the reality. I mean, you know better. You're on the front lines more hours, time integrated across time than I have been. But that's, that's why people are afraid of it. Because it's not clear how to make someone maximally confident in, say, seven subject areas all at the same time. And the truth is, I think maybe that any given kid, unless they're unique, in which case they might be failing in some other areas, quote unquote failing in some other areas, they can't be confident in seven subject areas at the same time. So we might have to like give up the dream. And you're right that the struggle is real. And after the struggle comes the payoff. And sometimes before the struggle hits the payoff, there's a, a real disappointment. And that's kind of like, that's what scares people, but it's also yeah. reality. But I think it's also the part that like we, as a teacher, a lot of times you get stuck in the, well, I got to help them because I don't want them. I don't like seeing them frustrated. And it's really hard to hold back because yeah. if, but if you don't, then they don't have the breakthrough. So I remember one particular time where um, I'm, I'm going to let Tom ask you a question here in a second, but I just remember one particular time where I had someone coming and I was doing an invention literacy workshop with students and uh, they had wanted to take apart a computer keyboard to create, to use with little bits, to like do something, to use the microphone. They were gonna break apart a laptop and get the microphone out and use it with little bits. I knew there was no way they were going to be successful at it, but I still let them do it. I still let them spend you know, 45 minutes that day breaking out, finding the microphone. Cause to me, that's still important to find the microphone. And it's important to go, hey, I have a really cool idea and I can't execute it. I have to think of a new way to execute it. And I think that's what we 
yeah, we're all trying to teach our students perseverance and that's one way of doing it. It's just, it takes a lot of time. And I, I think actually it would be really interesting to talk to everyone in the chat about is how we're gonna do that from this remote stance? How are we gonna teach kids to keep persevering when we're way over here and they're in their own house? And uh, that's that's kind of an interesting thing. So, uh, so I have been working on classes for kids at home and I am gonna put, I think I might put this chain reaction in it, Lindsay, so that one of my next lessons is gonna be this. Um, but also this STL file I will share that Eric made uh, on a blog post. It is, it's just 3D printed and Tom has some questions for Eric and Jay, so. I, so um, Eric and Jay, I, this question I have uh, is actually from a conversation I had probably six years ago. I'll not forget with an, uh, a friend of mine who's an engineer uh, professor, professor of engineering at Purdue University. And he um, was completely against the teaching uh, um, of Rube Goldberg, chain reaction machines as it relates to engineering. And uh, he said, so his beef essentially was, if I boil it all down, is that engineering and Rube Goldberg machines or chain reactions are, are on complete opposite ends of the spectrum when it comes to engineering. In other words, he said, engineering is about making things work and simplifying, whereas a good Rube Goldberg machine or chain reaction actually makes everything more complex. So um, uh, I love chain reactions and Rube Goldberg machine, but I'm curious how you feel about that, this idea of teaching of engineering design concepts and um, associating them with engineering or uh, Rube Goldberg and engineering. Where do you stand on that? Well, you broke them. No, I'm I'm good. He, <laughs> I, I actually agree with him. The problem is just what are we teaching? So if yeah. you want to teach um, efficiency, um, maximizing profit, minimizing energy expenditure, uh, and and things like that, uh, well, we should we shouldn't be messing around with uh, like abstract uh, roundabout ways of getting somewhere. We should go straight to the point, right? And, um, and so, okay, let's say that's true, fine. Um, now, what about if we're teaching art? Well, okay, pretty easy to see that Rube Goldberg machines have a part to that. Um, but uh, also what if we want to have a playful space to discover engineering and design concepts mixed together, not siloed, then we want a space where lots of solutions are yeses. And we want a space where um, there's a lot of playfulness and, and laughter, even if it's very serious. And even if it's just, you know, one moment of laughter and three hours of hard work, that's fine. So I guess the question is what style of learning do you think leads to an internal motivation and an excitement amongst a group of people? And what type of, um, what type of goals are you wanting to achieve? Is it the efficiency? Is it the design? Is it the art? Um, and even if it's the efficiency, what type of learning process do you think leads someone to be a successful engineer? You know, is the MIT mantra of like hacking is what leads to cutting edge engineering? Do we want all cutting edge engineers or do we need some practical engineers? And by answering these questions, you can answer, is Garub Goldberg a good way to teach engineering? And I, it just kind of depends. <laughs> I think it's yeah. not about teaching engineering, it's about fun, right? And it's about teaching a mindset. It's, oh. it's a combination for me. Like, I agree with it, with, with everything you, you said there as usual and uh, uh, very eloquently. But for me, for me, uh, there's something in this where I just want to build their skill to even, I want them to solve all these small problems, like on the run ah. together in slightly chaotic thing where they actually start observing, testing it. It's for me, one thing that I wanted to introduce is this slight chaos, which takes away uh, the the feeling that they're being assessed. Which actually, they have this small problem part of this chain that might not might or might not work, but but they will be doing lots of little engineering exercises in that. It's for me, it's not about becoming engineers or or, or something like that, but it still builds some core skills of observing, changing, and believing in their own ability to actually 
draw conclusions and implement the new solution. Uh, and that is actually, we can see a lack of this in engineers because they always go to state of the art or something and then try to modify uh, at least uh, a lot of places where I've been. Uh, <laughs> so you can't draw that everywhere, especially in not at, uh, for example, Media Lab that know how to hack, but um, yeah, I would like them to come up with a new and test a new idea. Uh, I think, I think an Eric and Jay, oh, I was just gonna say Eric and Jay are different types of engineers than uh, the one you're, <laughs> The one you're mentioning. Well, oh, I sorry, think, Lindsay. What, what I don't know who this person is that was exactly who's arguing against chain reaction machines. Oh, sorry, was Lindsay going to say something? Yeah, Lindsay was going to say something. I was just going to just add one more thing. Um, but I, you know, if we be talking like if we reference like the creative learning spiral, where you know we're talking about passion, peers, you know, play as part of it, the four P's. You know, I think when you're building a chain reaction, there's a lot of opportunities for you to make it your own. Like there can be some people that really zoom in on small details, like the tinkering aspect of like, you know, engineering, making sure that the ball rolls perfectly and it doesn't roll off. But it also could be an opportunity for someone to build a project that is special to them. That maybe it's about, um, like in Japan, for example, I've seen at one of the wonderful science centers using actually a, a kind of chain reaction to talk about um, climate change. It was a ball that was rolling through um, like a city and a community and it was like a really beautifully sculpted piece that I it kind of had a different spin that the, the ball would like fall in different places and trigger different events based off what was happening in the environment. So it could be detrimental for, you know, overfishing. And I thought that that was a really interesting exhibition of showing instead of just having a sign, for example. So it was like a way to incorporate storytelling or a way of, you know, displaying a concept or idea that's not really thinking so much about how the ball rolls and the potential kinetic energy, gravity forces at work. But that was like the one bit I wanted to add, but go ahead, Jay. Sorry to interrupt you. Oh, I don't know. Lots of ideas here, but but the, um, the student or the learner doesn't come to the workshop or the chain reaction machine as as like not having had previous experiences. They have had all kinds of formal lessons and they've been taught what kind of a failure they are or are not and what they're good at. And so bringing the chain reaction machine to them in the modern era of schooling and of like say algebra as one of the things that makes the most people fail out of high school or something like that, you're bringing it to them as something that disarms them. It's not just the chain reaction machine. Like, is that the best way to teach uh, joints and switches? And like, I don't know if it's, it's the best way or the most efficient way, right? But when you come in as a teacher or a facilitator, you're coming in authentically. If you can disarm the student from their past fears, or the, or the learner or the builder from their past fears. And, and the chain reaction machine, in addition to your uh, approach and your, you know, how, how confident you are or how like uh, curious you are, the chain reaction sh machine colors the experience for the learner and the builder. And we're not just trying to build, or, or I should say, are we trying to just build one type of engineer? Or do we wanna have, several types of engineers and are we speaking to the most advanced engineers like the professional engineers or are we speaking to all humans as potential builders uh, from in the sense that everyone should be able to write on a post-it note but not everyone has to write a book um, so is true of the literacy of engineering we have to speak to all types of people as engineers if we want to invite them in and maybe they will become professional but not if we don't <laughs> approach them in a way that can work for them given their past experiences when they walk through the door. You you guys went real serious on our show. That's usually <laughs> really funny. And um, and I think I think uh, I can't remember who just said it. I think it might have been Elizabeth that we don't have to have an either or mindset um, anyway, right? Like that's mm -hmm. part of being an educator is that we're here for all learners and we're here for all types mm -hmm. of kids. And I think chain reactions are extremely mm -hmm. playful and fun and. Um, and they, they really are a way to, to teach a kid about tinkering and problem solving that I can't think of many other ways to do it. Um, Lindsay asked how you have a group facilitate um, a whole chain reaction and I can't find it, but once I did, uh, and it was based on this idea from my friend, David Saunders, I had kids build Sphero obstacle courses. Like it was almost like a chain reaction, but it was like a mini golf with Sphero and you had to program Sphero to get through the 
obstacle course. And I can't believe I can't find it because there's some videos of, there's a video of a kid that I just remember. He was trying to build a connects swing to swing the Sphero out, which is mm. like completely illogical to let a child take a $100 robot, right? That's going to swing and, and land. And it's all like, it's not good ideas, but it's like, I, that sounds really cool. And he spent his entire lunch building this connect swing, uh, even though he normally failed every class, right? Like he normally didn't work at anything. He didn't want to do other stuff, but this was the kind of connection he could make and he could enjoy. And so he did this, this, I have a video of him and it, just at that one moment, the one time the swing worked, I think it was connects and cardboard. And he's just like, I did it. I did it. I failed so many times and I did it. And I think that's an excellent thing to give our kids at any time. Um, Lisa in the chat also said that she has her kids building chain reactions at home with everyday stuff. And I think that's really cool. Um, and she, she also suggest, said she wishes they had Mickey, Mickey and strawberries at home. And uh, we all, we do too. <laughs> <laughs> we, we wish they did too. And yes. um, if there's ways to do that, we're, we're working on trying to figure out how we can, can do that so that a school might buy from us and mail to a house or something. I think I mean, we're all trying to figure that out right now. I think, you know, during this uh, period of uh, 2020, currently, <laughs> you, know, you know, we're trying to make it work how we can. And, you know, of course, again, I want to really, really stress that, you know, the contents that we have featured in this planar is that, you know, this is our own implementation. So my implementation of using strawbies, you know, we have an endless surplus of toilet paper rolls that are making, that are potential for making great ball racks, but also that, you know, your implementation might be entirely different, but I think the core concepts shared here can be applied, like using pots and pans as buttons connected to the ground and using for the makey makey as a big surface for buttons. And, you know, I think that, you know, we actually really want to see how everyone else would implement, you know, with yeah. your kids mm -hmm. or with your students remotely, like even encourage them to create a chain reaction using just books. Like we have like tech based ones, but what you could also create something using books. Like I saw on one of the previous uh, Exploratorium's webinars that they were using, and actually conveniently, I picked up the Art of Tinkering book here. Oh, nice. But books are actually a really easy way to make a ramp for a ball. So you could actually just take apart your whole library, take all your textbooks, make a chain reaction pretty easily. Awesome. We are hitting our time limit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and we have a lot of people really, uh, really enjoying each other, uh, each other's ideas in the chat. It's really nice to see um, Mindy is sharing her telling people they can DM her on Twitter if they need to, um, to get some of her ideas about mobile, mobile play kits, mobile learning. Uh, I think that's really fun. And uh, we do have, we have lots of resources on both our pages. So Lindsay has an amazing amount of learning resources at Strawbies. Uh, I Did we share that link? We'll share that link here, but we'll also share it in the blog post. Oh, I'm sorry, Mindy's not a STEAM teacher. I apologize, Mindy, but I do know who Mindy is because she is someone who's followed me and done some of my projects. And so anytime someone's done a project that I've made, I, I happen to remember their name. <laughs> Mostly because I get really excited. There's something really exciting about if you build an idea and someone does something with your idea. So it must be amazing to be Eric and Jay and see people do these amazing things with your ideas all the time. But, okay. That was just a, some, uh, and y'all are ready to go. I could tell we'd have, it's time for us on uh, our coast time to drink more coffee. It's time for the Swedes to go to bed. Probably not. It's only dinner time for you guys, right? Early dinner. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we are going to take all of the resources. I actually will have the whole chat saved uh, when we when we end this. So I probably won't post the chat because that's a little weird, but I will um, go through and find all the links. It might take me more than a day to do that, but I will share um, all the resources that have been shared in the chat. I will share the video. I'll share the STL file. And um, Lindsay, you're welcome to take the whole thing that I share and put it on your Strawbies blog too. So you can, um, is, is it learning.strawbies.com for the, for the yes. guides? 
Ooh, I guess right. Uh, and she already has really great things. You can already do this roller coaster thing from home. And the grabber, I just followed those tutorials yesterday. They're really great, quiet videos. And I forgot to tell you that my six-year-old then wanted to just sit and watch them. She just wanted to sit and watch Shrabi's videos because <laughs> the music is calming and she likes just watching people make things. So uh, really fun. And uh, so we'll share all the, the video and everything. And thanks everybody for all your time and your serious thoughts and your playful thoughts. And we'll see you next time. Uh, actually, you Colleen, I'm wondering. Uh, oh, you're going to ask a question. <laughs> well, when is our next? We, we may be changing the day and time that we hold yeah. these. So, so be, yeah. uh, be aware that uh, if we do, we'll announce through social and uh, newsletters our and whatnot. Our next webinar is for um, Microbit and Scratch and Makey Makey together uh, with Katie Henry. And I we said early May, but we never really set a date. So I don't think it's next week. Uh, we might actually take a week off. We've done six weeks of live Tuesday mornings. And um, I don't know about y'all, but mornings for uh, with children during this time of school. <laughs> Homeschooling is pretty hard. So, uh, so yeah, we might change it. But we'll do, we're going to have another webinar coming soon. So if you sign up for our newsletter, you'll get all that information. And I will email out to everyone the um, the links to, to everything. And yes, all the videos are available on our YouTube channel. If you just go to the youtube.com slash makey makey, all our videos are there. So thanks everybody. Thanks Colleen, Eric, Lindsay, and Tom for putting this together. This is uh, really inspiring. Thank you. Oh, Super good. Cool. Thank you. Thank thanks you for so coming. much for having us. It was wonderful. Yes. Awesome. Yeah. Incredibly exciting. Yeah. It's it really fun. nice. Really nice to have.